So let's continue our discussion on electric charges that are stored on capacitors. Now, whenever electric charge is stored on a capacitor, what we're actually storing is electric energy. And this electric energy can be used to do useful work. For example, it can be used to power devices that require electricity. So let's see exactly how that works by looking at the following two diagrams. So diagram A essentially describes how a capacitor is charged using a battery, so a source of voltage. So let's suppose initially we don't have this battery inside our electric circuit. We only have our parallel plate capacitor. So without this battery, the charge on either one of these plates will be neutral. So this plate will have zero charge and this plate will have zero charge. Now initially, let's suppose we take our battery and we place that battery inside our circuit as shown in the following diagram. What will begin to take place? Well, essentially, electrons will begin to flow from the lower potential of our battery to the higher potential of that battery. So electrons will travel in this general direction. Now, of course, electrons cannot actually hop from this plate to this plate. Electrons will collect on this parallel plate. And the electric forces as a result of the collection of negative charge will push the electrons on this plate away and those electrons will now travel to this plate and will accumulate on this plate of our battery. Now eventually the voltage that is reached by our capacitor will be the same as the voltage of the battery and at this point our capacitor is said to be fully charged. So now our capacitor is fully charged and let's suppose we take our battery out of our circuit and instead we place into our circuit a certain device that requires electricity. For example, a computer. So what will begin to take place is electrons will begin to flow from this lower potential plate of our capacitor to this higher potential plate of our capacitor. Electrons will begin to travel in this direction. And because electrons will begin to move, the movement of those electrons will be able to do useful work on this computer and that will in turn power our computer. Now, what exactly is the energy that is stored in our parallel plate capacitor? Well, the energy that is stored on our capacitor is equal to the work that is done to bring all that charge from this plate onto our capacitor. So let's examine once more how charging a capacitor actually takes place. So what takes place initially? So initially we know that these two plates of our capacitor have absolutely no charge. So that means initially the capacitor has no charge so it takes no energy to move electric charge onto those plates. So initially these electrons flow without any energy onto our plate, without any energy input. However, as the charge begins to accumulate on this plate, more and more electrons appear on this plate, so electrons find it more difficult to move onto a region where there is a larger negative charge. So electric repulsion forces increase and the work needed to move those additional electrons becomes greater. So of course eventually this will be fully charged where this plate will have a negative Q charge and this plate will have a positive Q charge. So now we want to ask the following question how much work, exactly how much work is required to move the charge Q from our battery onto our plate where the voltage difference is given by V. So, to calculate how much work it requires to move the total charge 
from this location to this location, let's begin by asking how much work it requires to move an infinitely small quantity of charge given by dq. So because work is equal to the voltage multiplied by the charge, we see that if we take an infinitely small quantity of charge dq, it will take an infinitely small quantity of work given by dw. So our q in this case is changing. It does not remain constant. So the work is equal to the integral. We basically want to integrate from zero charge in this position to positive q charge in this position. So we're integrating from zero to q of dw. Now dw is equal to this, so we replace it as shown. Now we want to replace our voltage in terms of the charge given by Q. Now Q is equal to the product of the capacitance of the capacitor and the voltage. So that means we can take this, rearrange it and solve for the voltage. Voltage is equal to Q divided by C. Now we replace voltage with Q divided by C as shown. So we can bring our constant out, we get 1 divided by the capacitance C, and we integrate from 0 to Q of Q multiplied by dQ. So this becomes Q squared divided by 2 multiplied by C our capacitance, and we evaluate from 0 to Q, and that gives us the work is equal to Q squared divided by 2C. So, because work is equal to the quantity of energy that is stored on our capacitor, we see that the quantity of energy that is stored on our parallel plate capacitor is equal to Q squared divided by 2C. Now, Q is equal to C multiplied by V. If we plug in C multiplied by V into Q squared, we get the following result. The C's will cancel. One C will be left on top will have v squared divided by 2. Now we can also play around and we get the following result. Q multiplied by V divided by 2. So we get this by essentially replacing our C with uh, Q divided by V. So the Q's will cancel and the V will go on top. So these three equations are essentially the equations that give us how much energy is stored between plates of the parallel plate capacitor.